hi you guys here i am welcome back to my channel checking in how are you guys how are you doing how are you feeling are you surviving the self-isolation i had somebody correct me in my last video and i want to actually make all of you aware of it as well that we are all calling it quarantine and we're not unless you are sick with covid19 you are not in quarantine um you are in self-isolation so i just want to make sure that i'm using the proper terminology out there but anyways self-isolation how is it going how are the kids doing how is your brain it's been crazy we are preparing for a lockdown if you will what is it called we are preparing for a um shelter in place in minnesota awesome times but you know what it is needed it is necessary to protect those around us even if our family is safe from the virus and um, may do just fine with recovery um, some around us may not so anyway all the scary fun things right anywho all right Today I'm doing a tamale recipe for you guys. Um, I got a lot of questions the last time that I made this tamale recipe. Um, this will last you for, this type of recipe, this will give you food to last you for so long. Um, Mike and I, when we make tamales, the last time we made tamales, how many pounds of pork do you want to say that we did? We only did a three pound, okay. So it wasn't even pork butt, it was a so pork, it was just a pork roast we did last time. It was a pork roast, we slow, well, yeah. So it's a, about a three pound pork roast. Mm -hmm. And you can cook it in an Instapot or you can cook it in a slow cooker or whatever just to get it to the shred. Mm -hmm. You wanna get it down to shred. But keep in mind, when you cook a pork roast, granted it's three pounds when before you put it in there. No, we're talking about pork butt. No. Pork no. butt, okay, so pork butt, the pork first time roast, okay. So the you can first time around, okay, hang on. it's, yeah. The first time around we did a pork roast, right? Yes, yeah, first time around we did a pork roast. Yeah. This time around, um, I ended up getting two pork butts, about 16 pounds worth, and I ended up smoking it in my smoker. So, we smoked it, and then we shredded it, and fr froze some of it, and then kept some of it for tamales. So. Yep. Yep, so, it works out really well. Um, you get a little bit of a smoky flavor if that's what you like. Otherwise, you can just cook it in your slow cooker. And a pork butt roast is more, it's a little bit fattier too, so it has, it just, I don't know, I just feel like the meat turns a, a little bit more tender too. Yeah. So. It was a little drier with the pork roast. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a little bit drier meat, so you're really gonna have to, I mean, granted, it's gonna be, be in sauces anyways, so. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we're recommending you guys, or like, the reason why we recommend tamales, especially in times when you're trying to like, like prep foods like whether you're gonna have a baby or you're in self-isolation or in true quarantine and you want to have food stocked up you can make a huge huge batch of tamales granted they yeah and you can freeze them and granted they're a lot of work but you can make a ton a ton and they're really good microwaves like reheated I recommend they're if so you're good do it, do it on the weekend you do it on like friday mm -hmm. put in a roast cook it all night or throughout the night, put it in late at night, whatever. And then that way in the morning you have it, you can put it in the refrigerator and then you can start the rest of it. That's the longest process really is that. Okay guys, so this is step one for smoking our pork meat. Um, we have two pork butts here. Each one's eight pounds, one's nine pounds. And we use um, Burgalicious seasoning. Now one of these we're just gonna like, we're gonna put into quart sized baggies and freeze it for shredded pork to have on, well, buns or just to have by itself super good um, and then one we're going to use for um, making tamales which we will make more of like a chili flavor ancho chili chipotle flavor later on but we did use the same seasoning on both of these i'll show you what we used so this is the seasoning that we use it is um fergalicious barbecue we actually get this from down in we meats um, in fargo north dakota um a super awesome seasoning this is like the best seasoning ever um Anyways, that is what we put on both of the pork roasts and then Mike will likely smoke these pork roasts for about the next um, 12 to 14 hours. Second step to the tamales. So this is the next day and we have corn husks. 
Um, and we just fill like we try to like push the corn husks down into the water. So to do that, we use a heavy bowl with like a glass bowl with water in it. We cover it. We put this on low so that um, it kind of steams and helps to soften the corn husks. We usually do this for about. Well, last time we did it for two hours. This time I think we're gonna do it for about four to six hours. So the pork, um, we get done smoking it at like four in the morning. Um, like I said, we smoked it overnight. So I have, so I have four pounds of shredded um, smoked pork here, and we will be adding some like chili sauce and things like that um, and seasonings to make this a little bit spicier and more of like a yummy. Um, yummy flavor but yeah these are super super good cannot wait to munch on some later too while we're making the tamales because let's be honest it's like the best okay part. so um, don't mind our messy oven but these are ancho chilies um, we get two packages of them from the grocery store you can find them at Walmart um, I think let's see Mike just cut these up so when you they're dried and you want to rehydrate them so what we do is when they're dry we cut off the top stem and then we clean out all of the seeds on the inside and then we just kind of tear them up into like larger pieces like so okay so we have the chilies all um, sitting inside of here chilies chilies um, we've got them sitting in the water so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it to a boil again don't mind our messy oven um, we're gonna bring it to a boil and then once it's boiling we're gonna turn this off and then we will cover the chilies and then um, we'll just let them sit here until they're tender and these are a bit of a spicier chili and then also wanted to mention um, like if you're gonna be having the tamales with the kiddos and they're not so huge on the chilies. You can always swap this out for a different kind of chili, but um, The ancho chili is like pretty traditional as far as tamale recipes from all of the research that we've done So anyways, we're gonna let this come to a boil and then we will turn the heat off cover it and let it sit for a while until these are thoroughly tender. And just a little update on the corn husks. As you guys can see, they're hydrating and getting very tender. Um, and they've expanded quite a bit. So another like nice thing, we just did this water thing this time, but I think it's really helped because it's helped like circulate the steam because we've got ste um, water under here, like down here, and then we've got water in there. So it's just really helping circulate the steam and we've had this going for a good, what, four hours now? No. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is um, with this sauce, I noticed last time that I could definitely have used a little bit of seasoning. So I'm gonna be playing with it a little bit more this time now that I've made tamales once and they turned out pretty darn good if I don't say so myself, they're really good. So, but I think that it needed just a tish more seasoning this time. Versatile. Yes, versatile, versatile, versatile. Okay, I'm gonna stop making that hand gesture now. Quarantine life, listening to the North Dakota update because we live on the border of North Dakota, Minnesota. So I listen to both the Minnesota and North Dakota governors on the updates. So got this going with like super, super lovely um, hold music. And we're just getting ready to do um, the um, blending of the chilies. So I'm gonna pull up the recipe really good. Really good. I'm really gonna pull good. it up really good. I'm gonna pull it up really quick so that we know exactly what we're doing. <sighs> because sometimes, guys, I just don't have the best memory. But anyway, I'm gonna pull that up and then I'll walk you through what our next steps for the tamales are. A virgin. Okay, let's talk this sauce. So we've got three cups of chicken broth in here. It says to use a pork broth, but since we smoked pork, we clearly did not have any pork broth. So we've got three cups of chicken broth in here. We also added, okay, so don't mind my messy, like spices covered. All the like things have been spilling lately. <laughs> I need to clean this. Organizational and cleaning video coming soon. Um, we added garlic powder, nature seasons, 
uh, Mexican Village hot sauce mix because this is just like an all around really good like um, seasoning when it comes to like any kind of Hispanic or Mexican foods. Um, we added cumin and then we also added sea salt and we added jalapeno juice as well to give it a little bit of like a tang, like a kick. Um, and then this again is what the pork is um, seasoned with. So once we add the sauce to the pork, it will have a little bit, bit of like this seasoning as well. Okay, so next up, um, I'm going to strain the sauce over here. Mike's working on the masa, I'll show you that in a second. Um, but, time to strain. There is like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like little peels from the chilies, the ancho chilies in here. So we're just gonna go ahead, strain that. And this makes quite a bit of sauce. And this is why you strain it, guys. Do you see all of these like little peel things on the bottom? That's why you want to um, strain your chili sauce is because you do not want these inside of your sauce. You want your sauce to be all liquid. You don't want this. P.S. Somebody is almost sleeping over there. Almost sleeping. Okay, next up, we are doing six cups total of masa. Okay, so we're doing six cups of this masa mix. Um, we have a bag that has lasted us. We did like a normal batch last time. Now we're doing a double batch. So um, we're gonna be doing six cups of masa mix in here and then we're just following the directions on the package. So if you guys wanna follow the directions on your package. Also, I just wanted to- it. Yep, you, you can tweak it. Yeah, that's totally true. You can tweak it like seasonings, tastes, with the sauce especially, we taste test every time we add a new ingredient with that sauce, we taste test it, make sure it's exactly what we want. I'm gonna stop doing that hand motion. <laughs> Anywho, six cups of masa mix in here, and um, we will be adding, according to the package, it says to do chicken broth or water, we are actually doing chicken broth mixed with some of the leftover on show chili, like water that we rehydrated the chilies in. And then um, Mike seasoned it as well, super good. But we're gonna be adding that into here um, to replace the water. Follow the directions on the package. And then once we're done with that, we will add about a cup because we did so much of this. So we're gonna add about a cup of that red chili sauce that we made from the ancho, the rehydrated ancho chilies. And then, um, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna show you guys the next step. Also, you guys know me, please don't mind the dishes in the background. We just got our dishwasher, I think, back working today, which is incredible, especially since we're gonna be home over the next little while. We have it on a sanitization mode before we actually use it. Unfortunately, I still have some dishes left to do. I've done a whole ton of them already, but I've got some pots and pans bottles left to do, but we're almost there. All right, so Mike is adding that broth to the masa mix. Oh, just a little bit at a time. All right, don't mind us listening to the North Dakota update over here, but we just added in about a cup of the red chili sauce to the masa. Okay, we just added the... All right, we just added Crisco. We're going to need more liquid as well. Um, we followed the directions on the package, but we know like what the consistency needs to be like. We'll show you what the consistency looks like, and I will have a more accurate recipe posted down below for you guys, as well as putting... Actually, I think I'm going to put up this recipe on the M&M Rustics blog eventually so that there's a step-by-step. -step. But for now, down below is where you can find um, the recipe that we have used and adapted. You see how the consistency has changed? I would say Mike has added approximately another, Two, what, cup, cup and a half cup? Yeah. How many Two, cups total would you say? You have to add it until, I mean, you can go by the recipe. Too dry. It's tasty, but not, you don't want it dripping. How know? many cups of broth uh, would you say that we used? Like that, but, um, you don't want it dripping. You don't want it like, you know, pancake batter. 
You want it like dough, but a little bit pastier. A little bit pastier. The water, four and a half cups of water approximately. Okay, yeah. so that's what we're gonna have in our oh, recipe. No, I did for five. Five cups? I say about five, five and a half. Five cups of water per six cups of masa is yeah, what we did for this. For and we also added a cup of, approximately a cup of the red chili sauce too. So it was almost a one to one ratio for like liquids. So five cups of broth and then one cup of the red chili sauce reserved from the red chili sauce we made earlier. The pork and with the adobo. Okay, so we are transferring the, the masa now. This is the masa mix. It's so good, you guys. Even better than our first round. Like, holy cow, so good. I'm like eating spoonfuls of it. Anyways. So you um, see me scooping out here. That's what it should look like. Oh, yeah, look at that consistency. That's perfect. It's just a little bit of like stickiness to it. Oh, it's so good. Seriously, it's bomb. Um, anyways, we're clearing this out because we're going to need the mixing bowl to um, shred up the pork and mix it with the um, chili sauce um, to get everything um, to get everything thoroughly mixed together. We just like to use our mixer. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, again, this recipe will be posted below. It, this masa mix is to die for. If you use this exact masa mix behind us, um, I will have a little excerpt just showing you guys, or like just explaining to you guys exactly what we did for our masa here because every other recipe we've seen has sent, said just to like follow the recipe on the back of the bag. That's not true. You don't wanna necessarily follow exactly what it is. You wanna go by texture. Um, and the consistency of it. So we're gonna share exactly what we did with ours. Now remember that you may have to tweak it a little bit depending on what masa mix you used. Um, but I showed you guys earlier the one that, the brand that we're using, it's this bag right here. Um, anyway, super good. It's really actually not this red. I just noticed the lighting is making it look super red. Force, I just want to echo what Mike and Kurt said. We do oh. in the in the critical um, access facilities or in the hospitals we have. So that's part of Guys, set yourself up a workstation, seriously. This is key. <laughs> Make sure that you have room for your beer. Is <laughs> okay, so this is our workstation. Now what you're going to want to do is um, turn on the new Onward Disney movie. Yep. And <laughs> the kids aren't even down here. Oh, Mike, we could, that I can't put that in there. That's that's a lot. Uh, don't put that much. They say it, uh, about a couple tablespoons. But what you're going to want to do, we like to use like the rubber spatulas. We'll take a, our because it doesn't stick. You know, it's yep. got enough on there, but it, 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 and it's it got to be the right consistency. It has enough, has to have enough Crisco in it so that it doesn't stick to your spatula. If it's sticking to your spatula, it's too gooey. You need to um, adjust the consistency. But this is a perfect consistency. You're gonna that, spread and if it's it. That's too dry. Yeah, it, it'll crumble, crumble. And pull, crumble and pull away. So you don't want it to crumble. So anyways, you're gonna spread that masa on the corn husk. And going for speed. Num. We just wanna get a little bit of pork in there. Uh, not that much. <laughs> a little bit of pork. Like a tablespoon or two, and then you're going to wrap it. This is the most important part. When you're wrapping, you wanna make sure that both sides cover each other, okay? Yes. All the way around, mm -hmm. and you go like this, and fold the bottom in, and then you can lay it down. And we use our Come cookie on. racks to do this. Again, we're gonna show you one more time. So you're gonna spread your masa on the corn husk. By the way, the kids are upstairs playing in their bedroom. Masa on the corn husk. Yum, seriously, I'm so excited for this. By the way, we make these in our instant pot. Um, quickest way to cook these and um it's like a good steaming option so yeah because you gotta cook them in a steamer and then pork 
And I'm gonna get nice and close this time when Mike is rolling this so you can kind of see what I mean by having the edges overlap. So you're gonna do one side first. Side first. Mm-hmm. And then kind of peel. Yep. And roll like that. That way it's completely covered. Yep. All right, I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna do it slower so I can show you guys. <laughs> okay, you're gonna spread the moss on here. Almost all, all the way completely to the edge. This one actually needs a little bit more. Some corn hocks will vary in size. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You wanna make sure you fan it size. out enough too because sometimes if you don't fan all those ribs out mm -hmm. and you go to roll it, it'll make cracks in there. And, that's and you wanna spread it evenly out. too. Spread it evenly. I think that's another important stuff we didn't talk about is that if it's not spread evenly, you're gonna have uneven um, thickness in the actual tamale itself. So I'm even gonna spread this even more. You want it to be about the same size and about the same thickness across the whole thing. Um, okay, and then you're going to take your pork and you're going to put that in there. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed, so. And then I take one side and I roll it. What's nice about the dough is if it's the right consistency and you have enough of a thickness here. So there we go. This is what I wanna show you guys. Do you see how that peeled right off of the corn husk? So I like to do that and then I will fold it over so that it closes. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys really quick. Do you see how that's closing? Like there's a little bit of a hole here, but that's not a big deal. Um, so you can just kinda like patch that in. But do you see how that's completely enclosed now? Okay, so then we're gonna roll it all together and then the end here you're going to fold that up and then there's usually a little bit of extra moss on top here to make sure that the insides don't ooze out we like to tap that down so that it looks like this okay you see how that's nice and closed off so that when this steams it's going to be a perfectly closed tamale <laughs> Can you throw it? Oh, he just wants to love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we just got done with all of the tamales. Quite a few here. We're gonna cook these in the instant pot now, and then we will, um, what's it called? And then we will put these into baggies and freeze them for what's like left over what we're gonna not, what we are not going to eat for dinner tonight. All right, so we've got a little bit of water on the bottom of the Instant Pot, and we're adding our tamales. Okay, so the next thing that we do is we set the Instant Pot onto pressure cook, 
for 35 minutes and then we do let it um, like depressurize or whatever the full natural like cycle so we don't like manually um, decompress or whatever it's called so I know that that's not the most like technical specific recipe but that is how we make our tamales um, I'm sure those of you out there that make authentic tamales can have tips and tricks to add to our recipe um, this is just how we make them this is how we learned to make them and um, they 35. taste yep 35 minutes they taste pretty authentic to us so um, kind of a background story as to why we made these tamales um, the first time and it is because Mike when he was in high school or was it high school elementary school elementary school Anyways back when Mike was in school he had a friend um, Who was Hispanic and his mom made these and they were like real authentic amazing amazing tamales and Mike lived for them so we have tried to replicate them the best that we can Again, this is not perfect. This is, I'm not saying like, this is exactly how you make them. I'm just saying this is how we make them. And I hope you guys try our recipe and love the tamales as much as we do. I think that this recipe is so bomb and it's super flavorful. Um, we keep it a little less spicy for the kids, um, but Mike and I do add some extra chipotle sauce on ours when we have them. So I'll show you the end results here in a little bit, but since this is also a just like day in the life vlog so anyways guys okay so right now i just looked out the window and i was like what is that what is that this is what i see i hope i hope you guys can see this do you see that that is snow Ta-da! we have tamales done all right, so cool? we're gonna let these cool off for a bit. We actually microwaved a couple for the kids. <laughs> what is a hot? Let's not be whiny. All right, so we've been munching away at some, <laughs> but this is the batch. Um, quite a bit. Mike still has to cook the rest of these. This was mounted a little bit higher, but Kaya had like three. Mike had a couple. Riker had one. Like I said, we just microwaved those ones because we had to get the kids <laughs> fed before bed. It's like seven o'clock right now. It's like yeah. almost eight o'clock. So, but Mom, Mom, I want to do another show. eight tamales and every day and every day. Do you love the tamales? <laughs> no, not really though. Just spicy. No, tell me the truth, Kyle. Just spicy. Hey, you have eaten three of those tamales. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, huh? Feels good. So good. See, there you have it, guys. I'm Kid approved. On the table. Okay. She even said, because I have got a couple cooling here to show you guys what they look like when they're like unwrapped. Um, but I got a couple cooling here, and she's like, Oh, are hey, you going to share with hey, me? Hey, guess what? These are the ice cream tamales. They're not ice cream tamales, you silly. Mom, look at it. See, they have the bottom. So silly. <laughs> Um, so I'm just gonna let these cool and then I'm going to unwrap them and show you guys what they look like um, For toppings. I am using chipotle taco sauce. I this is actually a new thing for us um, And then I've got a little bit of sour cream too to like mix the two together and make a creamy chipotle sauce Yum. All right, I'm hungry Kaya's hungry. So I'm just gonna unwrap these But so they're gonna be a little bit sticky mind you just because they're not totally done cooling um, but when you unwrap them, you this is what they should look like. They should not stick. Yep, they they, like that. yep, this one stuck a little bit, but this is what they look like when they're all done. That one's actually pretty good. Yep, this one's like a little bit sticky, but it's not bad. Mom, look at Shannon, look at oh, look at that. So I've got two tamales here. All right, I'm gonna do this one-handed. Put a little bit of chipotle sauce on the side. And I'm gonna cut into one. Hey, Mom. I'm gonna cut into Mom, one and show you guys. Mom. I'm laying on the table. I'm tired. This is what the tamales look like on the it's inside. So <laughs> Fresh artichoke. What's the next thing we're gonna show them? Fresh artichoke. And how we you, steam them. Have you guys ever had Canada choke. 
Ugh. Garbage. Vinegary, gross. Garbage. Garbage. Mm. We'll show you a fresh air. So good. Are you tired? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> All right, we already have two meals worth of tamales ready to go. We have the last batch of tamales cooking here. I would say we'd probably have another two meals. So four meals and then five if you include tonight's meal. So that's five meals of tamales that we made. Um, I would say that's pretty dang good. We're gonna freeze these. So we will have four tamale meals in the freezer. Pounds. And that was only three pounds. Oh, I forgot to mention that. We only used three pounds of our shredded pork meat. And <laughs> we only used three pounds of our shredded pork meat in the All right. tamales. All right, you guys, I am going to wrap it up there for today. I hope you enjoyed our tamale recipe and just kind of like a little bit of like a weekend vlog with us. Mike and I are gonna head down to the garage and get started on our dining room table, get that finished up this evening. So stay tuned over on the m, &M Rustics channel because we should have that live for you sometime tomorrow afternoon. All the fun things, we're super, super excited for that dining table because look at our dining table situation right now, guys. It's like a hand-me-down, it's like, 12 years old from my parents and it's a great table definitely needs to be refurbished but which I think I might refurbish it and surprise them because they're um, buying a new house later on this year I think so anyway I might surprise them with that refurbished but um, yeah definitely we are in need of a new table a new setup um, something maybe to match with our theme a little bit more. I'm so excited to show you guys. So anyways, um, stay tuned tomorrow on the m and Rustics channel for um, that video and then be on the lookout for that blog. Everything is linked down in my bio. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another weekend vlog. Okay, bye guys.